going to do a complete takedown and uh, clean. Now this is uh, at the end of my takedown screw, but it's set in there pretty good. So I can probably just loosen that up. So you don't have to remove this pumpkin puncher from your barrel. There we go. But in order to do the takedown, which removes this pin here for the trigger group, um, I do have to get to that Allen bolt at the back there. This has to entirely come off in order to do that. Now this pin here is what you want to uh, push out. So you can take even a small screwdriver and just push that through. Just like that. And then you can remove your trigger group. A couple things will pop out. Don't be alarmed. These will come out. Next, you want to take the bolt out. Okay, now we can get uh, this four stock off. And we got the barrel, uh, the magazine tube actually. Uh, accessible. I'm going to probably do some really good sanding on that and re-below that. But uh, I want to remove a few things here. And uh, this is going to get a good clean because a lot of times you get a lot of buildup of carbon and uh, oil residue. So those areas need to be addressed. So I'm going to take out the uh, elevator here. There's two it sets in there with a couple of roll pin like things and that comes out. Sounds like the neighbors are arguing. <laughs> and this is going to slide through the front. That's going to get a good clean as well because you can see how grimy that, that sucker gets. Alright, my overall assessment. The bluing on the barrel took perfectly. That looks beautiful. Magazine tube. That looks awesome. Uh, let's see. The elevator was actually the best. That turned out very dark. I like that. Um, I may do the bolt action uh, later on, but uh, now it's time for assembly. Also the trigger group, uh, nice and clean, nice and oiled, and uh, time to reassemble. This is the hardest part actually. So we're going to start from first to last. So the last is the barrel. We'll set that aside for now. And also the uh, butt stock and the four end grip and the trigger group so oh and this added on dandy okay first off placing the elevator in there these two sides kind of squeeze and I just go into these open holes on the sides of the receiver it's a little tricky to get it uh, lined up at first but it should go in there right like that the next thing you want to do is place your four end stock in there and there's a couple guides that uh, need to line up there so that it goes in like that take your bolt and slide it up through the opening there and it's going to catch on a slide and kind of slide back like this the tricky part is lining up your forend stock with the bolt so that this piece can go on next Okay, there's an alignment that you need to bear in mind. When I pull the forestock back, you can see this bar that has an indent here. It needs to be just below here in order for the top piece of the bolt carrier or the bolt group, if you want to call it that, to slide right in there. Now, getting it to a line is somewhat of a bitch. Uh, you may have to fiddle with this to get it aligned. So what I do is I just kind of push and pull and use the, the front uh, slide foregrip to get it aligned. That's aligned. That bar there should seat and that whole bolt group is seated now. 
So the next step is to place in. Okay, this next part, the extractor, goes right into the side here. There's a hole for that to pop in place. Might have to line it a little bit. And uh, that should hold in place. The other side goes just right in there. Now you can put your uh, trigger group in. Okay, here I have the bolt pushed as forward as I can. What you're going to find is these two sidebars here are going to hold you up with getting this trigger assembly in because they're going to want to spread to the side. This does take a little bit of finesse to do, but uh, just about got it. And there we go. That's in. So the next part I'm going to do is put the barrel on and the uh, collapsing butt stock. And then most importantly, I'm going to dry fire and cycle the action. Before you fire this at a range, you want to make sure that nothing's binding. You're not going to have a critical failure because you accidentally put a part in wrong or a pin is not in. So we'll complete this and we'll do a dry fire and uh, cycle the action, make sure it's good to go, and then we're, uh, we're done. All right, we'll put the barrel on first. Let's take the uh, action back just a little bit. Place the barrel in there. And slide it forward. And start screwing that uh, takedown screw down. I need to bring the action back a little bit more. Seat that screw. And you can see this pumpkin puncher is on the takedown screw very, very well so that I can tighten up this barrel mount. One more. There we go. And done. Barrel is mounted. It looks very well. Uh, all the surface rust is gone. Might coat it with a little bit of oil before I put it in storage, uh, which isn't going to be stored well for very long because I like to shoot. Check the action. And put the uh, remaining of the butt stock on and I just... Okay, you just want to put that uh, trigger assembly pin back in. Kind of uh, tap it in there. I use a Phillips, very small screwdriver. And just uh, get it flush with the receiver. Make sure it's seated well and uh, now we put the uh, the buttstock on and we're done well there's the Mossberg barrel reblued looks beautiful magazine tube re reblued awesome everything nice and clean and uh, ready for a dry fire okay let's make sure that this weapon is good to go on the range so we're gonna load some inner snap caps just dry firing, make sure everything cycles well. Yeah, I think I like it. Looks great. You can see that uh, that bluing took well on the magazine tube. That is nice. This is actually something you might have to do every once in a while with a, a weapon that's over 20 years old is just break it down, baby it, take care of it, and it's going to give you years of service. So uh, prepper action out. I've got another few videos. I'm doing a flurry of videos this week. And uh, be safe, and uh, we'll see you next time.